Good morning, everyone um, in the audience here today. Welcome to today's um, listen only um, webinar presentation of how payroll for construction can help CPAs better serve their construction clients. Uh, my name is Alex Gray here, one of the regional sales managers with payroll for construction. Um, we have some members that are still filing in as it appears here. So we'll give everyone a moment to get settled in to the uh, the webinar here today and we'll kick things off here shortly. But uh, thanks again for taking the time to, uh, to sit on the session here today. We'll uh, get things going here in a moment. All right, looks like most of our attendees are settled in here today. So we'll go ahead and get things going here. So again, uh, my name is Alex Gray, one of the regional sales managers here at Payroll for Construction. Um, welcome again to today's um, listen only um, webinar session here regarding Payroll for Construction. Um, one thing that I will note, um, there is a questions portion um, on the control panel for the attendees here. So anyone that has any questions that pop up during the webinar here today, although you can't chime in and uh, provide some feedback here, feel free to throw some questions in the chat. And um, as we go along during the discussion here today, um, some of them I'll naturally cover during the presentation, but um, those that I don't cover here, I'll circle back to at the end. So feel free to throw those questions in the, uh, in the poll there. And then um, another thing that I will mention here is uh, for those that are um, in for those CPE credits here, um, I will be polling um, three questions throughout the webinar here today. So uh, I'll bring those up and make sure everyone has plenty of time to get those answered so everyone can get the credits for uh, sitting on today's session. But uh, thanks again for taking the time to join me and uh, we'll go ahead and get things started here. So payroll for construction. How can we help CPAs better serve their construction industry clients here? So meet payrollforconstruction.com. We are an online payroll service provider built specifically for the construction industry here. Um, payroll for Construction, currently processing payroll in all 50 states. Um, we have clients that are working in all 50 states here. So those in the construction industry, whether you're working in one state, whether we're working in multiple states, reporting to multiple states for taxes, payroll for construction, going to be able to handle however many states that these clients are going to be working in as we currently are payroll pro processing payroll in all 50 states here at payroll for construction. What makes us different is we're powered by a, a foundation software. Um, foundation software is a full construction job cost ERP accounting software. Foundation was created back in 1984, but in 2006, we realized that, hey, foundation has a very powerful payroll module here in not everyone may need the power of the accounting software here. Um, what do we do very well? That payroll module. So in 2006, we pulled out that payroll module, job costing parts of the uh, general ledger, and created today what is known as payroll for construction. Um, so payroll for construction behind the scenes is going to be powered by that foundation software accounting system um, that is built specifically for the construction industry. So when I get into the database here today, you'll see the foundation branding. But um, one thing that I'll also add on top of that there is your client doesn't need to be on the full foundation accounting system to use the payroll for construction um, payroll processing service. Um, we do integrate directly with QuickBooks, Sage products, um, other accounting packages out there where you don't need to be a part of Foundation's ERP accounting software 
to use payroll for construction here. All right, so what do we do here? Um, we're going to be just like that construction specific. Uh, we're going to be like a, a payroll service provider, like your ADP, like your paychecks, but we're our construction specific only here, only dealing with construction industry clients. So those that are working in multiple states uh, or, or the contractors that are working in states like Ohio, like Kentucky, where we have the local taxes, um, they could be working across a number of different localities in the week having these guys hit a number of different taxing jurisdictions that are going to be hard for those to track and handle um, with current um, packages out there for payroll. Um, payroll for construction is going to be able to handle those working in multiple states, those working in multiple localities. As inside of our system, once we jump into that database, you're going to be able to see that we can control job information, what's happening on that job record, drill down on a job by job basis, assign rates, assign taxing jurisdictions, what's going on on a job by job basis, then as we're processing that payroll, the system's going to do the legwork for us and be able to track all that information for us. Third bullet point here, um, my contractors that are working with uh, uh, prevailing wage work, those that have union work, we're gonna be able to automate those pay rates when it comes uh, time for those prevailing wage jobs or those union jobs when we need to pay these guys a specific rate based on the type of work that's being performed here. So um, able to control on a job record basis, what schedule of rates needs to be tied to that job. Then again, as we're coding that time into the system, be able to automatically assign those prevailing wage rates. And that's also going to go with those fringe calculations. So um, have separate tables that we're able to set up those fringes, how they need to be calculated. Hey, Maybe those, that fringe is subject to the 0.5 calculation for the overtime there, or maybe it's not going to be subject to that 0.5 um, calculation rate for overtime work here. I'm able to set up and automatically calculate those fringe calculations again by a job by job basis for us here. That also with those fringes uh, can also provide a prevailing wage fringe reduction factor. So my contractors, those clients that are, offer, are already offering benefits um, to the uh, clients, um, with the, the employees at their service, at, at their team there, we're going to be able to set up a prevailing wage fringe reduction factor for, so those aren't overpaying on those fringes that they're offering when it comes time for those prevailing wage jobs. And the last point here on um, that workers' compensation. So inside the system, we're going to be able to set up that workers' compensation policy um, at payroll for construction. We don't make the workers' compensation payments here, but for job costing and audit purposes, we're going to be able to set up that workers compensation policy that can be tracked broken out by the type, different types of work that's being performed and then have a nice report that is generated for us so that you and your clients can see where that where they currently stand against that workers compensation policy next slide here um then with that construction payroll we know how um, important the reporting purpose piece comes with when it comes to construction payroll here so um, those reports that are automatically going to be generated and calculated inside the database for you. Um, my contractors that are working jobs that require that certified payroll reports are going to have electronic upload. So those that are working with the LCP tracker, the California DIR, I'm going to be able to create the automatic electronic uploads, but also going to have over 40 plus different print options. Um, uh, the standard federal, those that are different states, different cities that are requiring those different print formats also going to be available for those certified payroll reports inside the database that I'll jump into again later on here in the demonstration. Second point here, minority compliance EEO reports. So um, if your client's job specific, some may require those minority compliance reports, EEO reports, going to have electronic and print versions of these reports available as well inside the database that again are automatically going to be um, calculated, filled out for the clients as that payroll is being ran inside the payroll for construction database. Job labor and burden cost reports. Uh, we know with construction payroll, hey, when we're paying these guys $15 an hour, um, we, we're going to need that job labor, the burden cost detail, what's going on with our payroll runs, what's actually costing us when our employees are on the job site for us here. So we're going to have job labor and burden cost reports that are going to be available inside the database here. Um, it can also um, custom set up reports if we needed to pull in any information um, for a client specific needs or if we needed to tweak any of the reports available inside the database. 
Um, fourth point here, the workers' compensation report. So again, going to be set, able to set up that workers' compensation policy. Um, then for that audit, for that job costing purposes, going to have multiple um, high level and detailed formats available for that workers' compensation. Then for those um, that are working with uh, a deduction um, to uh, vendors, such as healthcare or retirement deductions, going to be able to set up those miscellaneous deductions, have them automatically withheld from the employee's paychecks. Then going to have uh, reports available to be ran to see where we stand with that 401k provider, where our employees are at with those miscellaneous deductions. Then also going to have a garnishment handling service. So um, those that have any employees with uh, garnishments such as child support, uh, alimony, tax garnishments, going to have reporting available for the garnishments for the clients there. Then also with payroll for construction here can handle the sending of those garnishment checks, the filings um, for those that do have any garnishments that are, would like our team to handle here as the payroll service provider. Then the last bullet point here, um, union reports. So um, those that do have clients or at the, at the team have any union work that's going on, going to be able to set up the schedule of what's going on with that union contract. Hey, what our schedule of rates of pay are, what deductions and fringes, what benefits are we offering per that union that we're working with. Then after that payroll's processed, have a report that'll be ran to show us where we stand with those union deductions and fringes, what had gone into that union work per that union we're working with and have a nice report for us to show what ultimately the check needs to be cut to then be sent off to the union for those union benefits there. Then at our core, still gonna be that traditional payroll service provider here. So gonna be able to pay the employees via check or direct deposit, then going to be able to handle the tax filings and payments. Um, our team will handle the weekly, the monthly, the quarterlies, the annuallys, can handle any federal, state, local authorities, FUDA and SUDA. Then also our team would handle the filing and distribution of those W-2s at year end. Um, for those that do not start on the first of a year for us here um, with payroll for construction, if you start in the middle of the year, you say start 2131, our team's gonna be able to get that payroll history up to date, what has been performed so far during the year at that company and then have that information up to date inside the payroll database. So then when it comes time for those W-2s at year end, your client would only receive one W-2 from payroll for construction. What else makes us different here? So like I had mentioned um, earlier in the presentation here today, we're gonna have direct integration with QuickBooks and other accounting programs out there. So yes, even though we are powered by foundation software, that full ERP job cost accounting software um, behind the scenes, and we integrate directly with them. We have integration tools that we built to integrate with QuickBooks and other accounting programs out there like the Sage 300, the Sage products that we're seeing in the construction industry, other accounting packages out there. You don't have to be a foundation only client to use our payroll service here. You can use whatever um, accounting package that client currently using at their team. Our only focus here is construction. We're only dealing with the construction industry. We're gonna have a staff of professionals experience with construction payroll available for you, at, uh, available to assist you and your client um, free of charge as a payroll for construction client. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time, our support team is all our in-house staff, only trained on our database, only dealing with the construction industry. They're staying up to date with the industry standards and we'll be able to assist if any items come up of question, we have any issues with those payroll runs inside our database for you or your client. On um, fourth bullet here, we're gonna have a time card import feature. So even though at Payroll for Construction, we do offer our own mobile application for field time card entry that was developed in-house, syncs directly with the Payroll for Construction database. Employees can log in a, a punch in, punch out, their own single time card from the field for us. Um, but if uh, you, a client signs on with our service here and they're using another mobile time card application out there, such as HH2, uh, Exact Time, HCSS, just for some examples for you there. We have a time card import feature on where we are able to pull time outside, uh, pull a file outside of that uh, mobile product that the client's currently using, import that into the payroll for construction database, be able to then run that time for the um, for their team. So do not have to be on our um, mobile feature, our mobile application to be able to use um, mobile time cards with the payroll for construction database. 
Um, then payroll for construction, going to be web-based access anytime, anywhere with an internet connection. Um, so your personal laptop, you're traveling, as long as you have an internet connection, you'll be able to go ahead and log in to that database. I um, mean, we can have user-specific logins created. So if you want your own user with specific defaults set up to what you're going to be viewing inside that database, hey, you're only going to be viewing some reports for your client. There's going to be some other things that we're checking out in there. And our client has a full access user that they're going to be logging into. I'm going to have that web-based access. You can have that detail broken out user by user, but be able to log in anytime, anywhere with an internet connection. Final point here today, um, the online stub portal for your employees to retrieve their pay stubs electronically. So we do have a product known as eAccess that once that payroll is processed, payroll data will automatically flow into the eAccess online portal. Employees can then log in, um, see their current pay stubs, their pay stub history. They can also run their own custom earnings and deductions report, time card history report, and as well as if our client is tracking any paid time off, any cruel paid time off, vacation sick time tracking, the hours would be available for employees to see inside that e-access portal for them as well. How a payroll process with payroll for construction? Simply log in online, enter those time cards. So um, clients uh, can manually enter the time into the database, or again, like I had mentioned, import those time cards into the uh, the payroll for construction database. Someone from the team will just be responsible for getting those hours into the actual payroll database here. We'll have a number of reports available for them to review their time card entries and their payroll calculations. Then once everything looks good to go, submit payroll with the click of a button going to send that database copy over to our team here. Then we'll have that payroll process within the hour, give you a full report breakdown of the total amount of checks and direct deposits and the liability that was handled by our team there. All right, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go ahead and launch the first polling question here. Um, so the first question that I'm going to launch here, how many states can payroll for construction process payroll in here? So is it one state, 10 states, 50 states, or 25 states here. So we'll give everyone a moment to get their responses logged in here. Again, we got our first polling question open here for the CPE credits. I mean, again, that question is going to be how many states can payroll for construction process payroll in? Is it going to be one state, 10 states, 50 states, or 25 states? Now a couple more responses here. We'll give everyone a couple more seconds. Again, question here, how many states can payroll for construction process payroll in? One state, 10 states, 50 states, or 25 states? Looks like we got everyone's responses in here and everyone did get it correct. Uh, the correct answer was all 50 states. Payroll for construction can process payroll in all 50 states here. So go ahead and close that polling question there. And then what I'll go ahead and do here is we'll jump into the payroll for construction database here. So uh, what you are seeing is the home dashboard for payroll for construction. So for you and your client, would be logging in this would be the home screen that you'd be greeted with again like i mentioned we are powered by foundation software that full accounting software behind the scenes here so you're not going to see the payroll for construction branding you're going to see it says foundation software but again you can use us for the full accounting or for the payroll only integrating directly with those accounting packages out there but um those that do move forward with payroll for construction here this, uh, the, the team is going to start with a blank database copy. Uh, our trainer, our training staff is going to build this database from a blank copy to house the information that the client needs to successfully run payroll for their team. Uh, 
we don't want to give a preloaded database to everyone because we don't want to have all the information that we think fits most of our clients here, but you know, not everyone's going to be using it here. So again, this is something that's going to get built um, by our team here so they can have the information that only they need. So they have that database set up custom to what they need for their team and their payroll runs here. So one of the first spots they're going to jump into here is going to be that payroll maintenance here. And with our service here, you're already going to start seeing construction specific language that allows us to control and uh, differentiate us from other payroll service providers out there. So I'll jump into the employee record here in a moment, but we're going to house those employees um, for those that are using the service here. So our, our trainers have a large import template where we can bring in a large number of employee information at once. So we're not manually setting up 50, 100, 150 employees inside the database make it easy to get this um, database built with the information they need for their team. Again, even though we don't pay, pay the workers' compensation, poly, or we don't make the workers' compensation payments here, we're going to be able to set up that workers' compensation policy inside the payroll for construction database. Um, have, again, have that broken out by the type of work performed, can even set up exposure limits to what needs to be exposed to that workers' compensation policy in that week. Then for audit purposes, for that job costing purpose, um, as that payroll's processed, have those data, that amount available for them when it comes to their job cost reports, their payroll reports of what their workers' compensation policy is job cost wise for the payroll. Um, but what makes us different here at the bottom? Those that have union prevailing wage work going on with their company, our database is gonna have the ability to assign specific pay rates to the job record here of what's going on. So is this a union job? Is this a prevailing wage job? What schedule of rates needs to be brought in for this job per what type of work needs to be performed here? So on the employee record that I'll jump into here in a moment, going to house the private commercial rate for our employees here, but we're able to differentiate again on that job record, job by job basis, what needs to be brought in here. So those that are working with one union, working with multiple unions here, um, our team is very good at reading the union contracts. So once we get that new schedule of rates, union benefits that need to be set up here, these can be sent over to our team and we can set up these tables for the payroll clients behind the scenes for them. Then what you'll see is we can then timestamp these with effective dates here. So in the first of the year, these are what our pay rates are per that, um, that union contract. But on June 6th, uh, the, everything's gonna get raised by a dollar here. Once that new contract gets sent over, our team can set up the new table, timestamp that effective date there. If those schedule of rates are changing in the middle of a payroll run, the system's going to be able to look at that effective date, bring in the corresponding rate of pay for our, employee, or for our employees, and even timestamp that rate change on an employee's pay stub so they know that they were getting the correct rate of pay per that work performed here. Um, and then those contractors that don't have union work, hey, we have prevailing wage work here. Uh, again, gonna be the same thing as those union schedule of rates there, type of class, type of work we perform for our employees here, assign that pay rate for the employee, and the system's going to be able to look at the, um, the private commercial rate for our employee and the prevailing wage rate and pull in the corresponding above scale rate of pay for those employees um, if that job requires our employees to be paid a prevailing wage. Um, one note I'll include on that as well, um, even though we can differentiate um, between the private commercial rate and the employees um, rate here for the uh, prevailing wage job, um, the system is able to pull in the higher of the two um, pay scales if that employee is already receiving uh, a private commercial rate more than what is being required, required for the prevailing wage. You'll have ways that we can control what actual rate is being pulled in for our employees here. Then with those pay rate tables, going to also then have deduction and fringe tables that can be set up separately, then tied to the job record on that job by job basis. So those again that are working with those unions here, hey, those union benefits that we need to be set up here. Um, again, send those over to the team. We can get these tables set up for you here. Then the control how this needs to be calculated here. So with the custom language set up of what those codes are going to be, what benefits are we setting up inside the database for the client. Um, whether this is a deduction or a fringe, what benefit we are bringing into the calculation here, then how that benefit needs to be calculated here. Hey, 
Is it based on hours worked where um, it, that benefit's not subject to that 0.5 calculation for the overtime rate? Or is this based on that hours paid where we need to have that benefit um, calculated with that 0.5 calculation for overtime pay? How this set up or the how it needs to be calculated here, the rate that that benefit is being um, issued at, then also can control how it is being taxed here, then also can even set up limits for those benefits, those deductions and fringes um, that's going on with that union, um, that union work there. And again, those that aren't um, working with any unions here, hey, we just have prevailing wage work here and we have that prevailing wage fringe, um, whether this is going into the employee's paycheck or we're sending off to some sort of fringe benefit group, doesn't matter if it's going into one bucket, into multiple buckets, can be broken out here. Then we take these tables, tie them to the job record, as we are coding that time to the system here, those calculations are going to be available for us as the system's going to be doing the legwork for us. I can close out there. Then jump into the employee record here. Not going to spend too much time on the employee record here, but uh, again, our team would get those employees set up inside the database, have a way that we can bring in a large amount of employee um, uh, information at once. So we're not manually setting this all up here, but the top, How's the employee uh, uh, social security address, basic employee information here. Um, then also set up defaults with our team. Hey, what department are they working with? What trade are they under? What workers' compensation state class do we need to tie them to? Um, make it easier on the team, on your client, whoever's running that payroll, um, so they're not updating information. Have some defaults that'll automatically pull in for our employees here. Then. Also on the employee record, you've been mentioned, you've been hearing me mention talking about their private commercial rate. On the employee record, allow us to control what they're being paid for those commercial jobs. But then again, the union work, prevailing wage work, gonna have separate rate tables that we can have the corresponding rate of pay be brought in um, per what we need for that job there, tie that directly to that job record. Uh, but then also going to house the deductions for employees here. Um, if any employees have any miscellaneous deductions, um, or again, anyone with child support, any garnishments, health insurance, 401k, going to be able to set up the deductions, have them automatically withheld from the employee's paycheck. And even though we're not making those payments, the vendors have reports uh, available for you of what the amount needs to be to cut the check to that vendor for the health, um, the health uh, or the retirement deduction there. Go ahead and close out there. So then that payroll maintenance has been completed. Then for um, the running of the payroll here for the job costing, gonna have to get some basic job information set up inside the database um, by the client here. So inside job costing maintenance, as a payroll only client here um, with payroll for construction, the team would be responsible for getting the information matched how the job appears inside their current accounting system. So no matter if that, um, that job number here is a combination of letters, numbers, dashes, does not matter. We want to get that job number entered and then put in the corresponding description here. Again, we want this to match how it appears inside their current accounting system. So for QuickBooks, Sage, we want the job number and description to match how those jobs are currently being set up and don't have any limits to how, again, they could be named here. Numbers, letters, dashes, does not matter. We can handle it there. Those that are working in multiple states here, hey, where is this job taking place? What taxing jurisdiction do we need to tie to this job here? Um, so, hey, those that are working in states with local taxes or, you know, or we're just working, uh, this is going to the state of Wisconsin here, uh, be able to tie in the corresponding taxing jurisdiction to that job. So then as we're coding that time to the system, the job the system will be able to know what corresponding taxing rates or jurisdictions to apply to that job record for us there. Doesn't matter again if we're working across one state or multiple states. And last big item here on the general tab of the job record, those that need that certified payroll report generated here. Simply turn on the certified payroll checkbox. The system will then know to go look at that job, those payroll runs, be able to then pull that information into the certified payroll report, and the client will be able to select the corresponding certified payroll option that they need, whether again, if it's electronic for things like the LCP tracker, the California DIR, or if we're using the print format there, be able to pull that information into the certified payroll report. Then last item on the job record that we'll cover here today, 
Um, I mentioned tying those rate tables, those fringes to that job record for the employees here. So, hey, is this a prevailing wage job? Hey, or is this a union job here? That, um, that schedule of rates that we had tied up, those fringes on that job record, we need to pull them in, go ahead and select the tables that have been set up, click OK to save, then the system, again, is going to be able to look at those schedule of rates, look at the fringes that we had set up, be able to then automatically make those calculations for us here. Close out there. All right, so cover the payroll maintenance, cover the job costing maintenance. Before we jump into um, bringing the time into the system and the payroll reports, going to have one more um, one more polling question that I'll open here. So the second polling question that I'm gonna open here, go ahead and launch. Where can you override control rates in taxing jurisdictions in payroll for construction? Is it going to be on the job record? Is it going to be on the cost codes? Or you cannot do this in payroll for construction here. Again, so I'll go ahead and repeat the question, give everyone a moment to get answered here. So where can you override the control rates and the taxing jurisdictions in payroll for construction? Is it A, gonna be on the job record, B, on the cost code, or C, you cannot do this in payroll for construction? Give everyone some more time here. Again, where can you override slash control the pay rates in taxing jurisdictions in payroll for construction? Is it gonna be on the job record? Is it gonna be on the cost code? Or can you not do this in payroll for construction? Wait now, a couple more responses again. Last time here, where can you override slash control the pay rates and taxing jurisdictions in payroll for construction? Is it going to be on the job record, which we just covered, the cost codes, or you cannot do this in payroll for construction? All right, looks like we got all responses here. And the correct answer was A, the job record. So again, we can take those pay rate tables that we set up on, what, on the prevailing wage job or the union jobs, tie those to the job record, to be able to pull in the corresponding rates of pay. Then also on that job record, um, be able to tie in the corresponding tax table for that job inside the payroll for construction database, which will then override and control that tax in the jurisdiction as well. All right, so our payroll maintenance has been completed, our employees, our workers' compensation policy, our pay rates, deductions, fringes, all is set up inside the database. Our jobs have been entered here. Time for us to then bring time into payroll for construction here. So inside the payroll daily, going to have the enter time card screen the client would access to bring that time inside the database. Whether they're using our mobile application, whether they're using um, another mobile application out there that isn't developed by our team and importing that time into the system, or they're simply manually entering time into the database, our team will set up a custom time card entry screen to make it as easy as possible for that client to be able to enter time into their database here. Um, so the first one I'll show here, just gonna be a basic employee job entry screen here. Going to enter some time for my employee broken out across multiple jobs here. So my employee, Rick Stevens, going to go ahead and enter time for him across three jobs inside my database here. My first job here, going to be my private commercial job, my job 12 here. Second job I'm going to pick, going to be my jobs 97021, which is a prevailing wage job that I have its own schedule of rates tied to on that job record inside the database. Third job I'm going to pick here, 
going to be my job 97051, my liquid recreation. This is another prevailing wage job, but it has a separate schedule of rates tied in to that job record behind the scenes here. Then go through, fill out that time on the time card here, whether employees are working one job site, multiple job sites in a day, does not matter. The system will be able to handle it here. And once the hours have been entered, everything looks good to go here. The system's going to do the legwork for us based on the items we had set up behind the scenes. Once I click OK, so I click OK. The system will then look at the defaults that have been set up here, um, knowing that, hey, my job 12 here, this is a private job. There's no prevailing wage table tied into it behind the scenes, but my job 970251, both have their own schedule of rates tied in, tell me what table's being pulled in based on that trade, pulling in the corresponding rate of pay above scale by employees' private commercial rate here. Now, even though my employees working the same trade here the entire week, let's say, you know, on job 97021 here, um, we had, he was working across two, dev two different um, uh, schedule of rates here. So, you know, let's say on Saturday, get another, oh, yeah. Let's say this day he had another two hours, but he wasn't working as an electrician for me. He was working as a laborer here. Let's go ahead and enter that time, click OK. Same job, same day, two different schedule of rates for that employee on the same time card here. The system's going to be able to handle it. So um, it does not matter multiple, um, one state, multiple states, multiple rates, multiple jobs can all be handled on one time. Also going to be the same for those that have any reimbursements for our employees here. So our team's able to set up a non-taxable reimbursable expense earned code. Simply type in that amount, whether it's a $25 per diem, or we want this to be a fuel reimbursement, uh, a mileage reimbursement. Does not matter. Going to be able to handle those reimbursements on the same screen along with the employee hours here as well. Or if we had an allowance that we were bringing in on a, on a monthly basis, let's say, you know, we had a, a reoccurring $50 phone reimbursement that's going to employees. Our team can also set up reoccurring time cards to make it very easy to bring in these reimbursements for our employees here as well. So then once that time has been entered into the payroll for construction database here, actually, you know what? One thing, one last thing I'll cover here is the time card import for clients here as well. Um, so again, we'll set up a custom time card format screen for the client here. So those that are working with another mobile application out there, or maybe they're collecting their hours on an Excel sheet to be able to then import into the database here, access that time card format screen that's set up by our team here. Client simply clicks import at the top. Our team will set up the import sequence for that client based on how that file is mapped from that current application, then be able to pull that successfully into the database here. This is a one-time setup by our team. Once it's been set up, your client will not need to touch the import sequence. All they'll be responsible for is simply clicking browse, selecting the time card file that they would like to bring into the system here, clicking next, clicking finish. System will let them know if they did have any errors on the import process. Their time is then brought into the database here. Go ahead and click OK. Those defaults that have been set up behind the scenes, the information we'd set up on a job by job basis will then be tied to that, um, to the time cards for our employees that allow us to review the next steps moving forward for payroll here. All right, so time's been brought into the database here. Time for us to then go ahead and review. So we can have a number of reports available for the client to review that payroll run before our team touches it for processing. First one going to be the time card list proofing report here. If I go ahead and just simply run this report here, it's going to show me my employees broken out across the week, giving me my employee subtotal of hours. Craig, Arthur, Rick, showing me all the jobs that they were working across here, giving me the full breakdown of what had been entered, what cost code they were working against, was this regular, was this overtime, if we had any reimbursements would appear on the screen for us here as well to what that pay rate was, what trade they were working on. Hey, was this a union? Was this a prevailing wage job where we had that schedule of rates tied in for us behind the scenes? That tax group, what city, what state was that job taking place in? What jurisdiction is being assigned to this employee here? Give us the full ability to review that payroll run. Any item highlighted in blue allows the client to double click on that time, drill down into the database to see where those hours came from here. Then if they needed to make any changes, hey, this is supposed to be eight hours, 
click OK to update. Simply update the hours for that employee's time card in that week here. All right, but then with this report inside payroll for construction here, report's going to be powered by a criteria tab that allows us to control how we want this report to be ran. So we said, hey, that report's great and all, Alex, but my client likes to see the job subtotal of hours for the week before they run that payroll. They want to review how things are going on here. On the criteria tab, can set up custom defaults on a user by user basis, how they would like these reports to be ran. So now when I'm running this report, I'm going to see that I have the same information, my same employees here, but now it's going to be broken out by job. Job 12, my shop job, my Chester Avenue Bridge job, giving me my job subtotal of hours here at the bottom. Have that information be able to be ran, how that client needs to review that data for their payroll run. Then with the reports inside payroll for construction here, PDF, Word, Excel, CSV, very easy to pull these reports outside the database, save them to your computer, then send off to another member of the team or between yourself and the client if needed to be done inside that payroll database here. Then with this, um, with this time card history report here as well, we're not limited to just the current hours here. We wanted to say, hey, I wanted to see time card history between a certain date or all time. You are not limited to just viewing the hours for that week in time. You can view it on a monthly basis, daily basis, or all of my payroll history if needed. going hand in hand with that time card list proofing report here. Then I have a number of pre-check registers available for the client to then um, review what's going on with those payroll calculations again before we touched it for payroll processing. So was there an employee that didn't receive a pay stub this week? Uh, what's going on with that workers' compensation policy here? Hey, what do we have miscellaneous deductions wise? Uh, big one could be the pre-check register here. Go ahead and run the report. Give us all of our checks, direct deposits, pull out all that employee information, paid hours, earnings, deductions, then showing us our net pay down to the penny of what our employees would be paid via check or direct deposit if our team were to go ahead and process that payroll at that point in time. All right, so clients reviewed payroll. Payroll looks good to go here. Time for us to click submit to send that off to the team for processing here. So. Someone from the team comes in, clicks submit payroll, sends a copy of the database to our payroll processing team. Within the hour, we'll have that payroll process, give you a full report breakdown, total amount of checks and direct deposits, total amount of liability that was handled by our team. Then that night, we're overnighting the live checks, um, preparing those direct deposits um, to then hit the employee's accounts on Friday, those checks to show up the next day or whatever on payday um, to then distribute to those employees once it comes time. So then give them their live check or when that direct deposit needs to be hit. All right, so payroll's been completed. Our employees have been paid. Time for us to then go run the payroll reports that are available inside our database for us here. So jumping into the payroll reports section here, the first one that I'm going to jump into is that workers' compensation report. So again, even though we're not paying the workers' compensation on policy payments, then have reports for audit and job costing purposes to show you where you stand against that payroll for construction. I mean, that workers' compensation policy, my apologies, as that payroll has been processed through the system. So put in any custom date range here. First one, just going to give us a high level overview broken out by those classes. So, hey, what were my hours worth? Gross earnings. What was actually exposed to that policy based on those caps that had been set up inside that database for that policy here? He said, hey, this report's nice and all, but we're going through an audit. We're going to need some more detail here. We need to get it down by trade or even down by earn code here. Switch that report format. Now have all my classes broken out, showing me all my employees that worked under that class, what their earn code was here. You can even see those exposure limits in more detail here. So my guy, Arthur, had $63 of gross earnings, two hours of overtime here, but only $42 were exposed to that workers' compensation policy based on those caps that have been set up inside of our database. As I scroll through, we have all that information broke out, broken out for us here, giving us our nice subtotals here at the bottom. So then with that workers' compensation policy, also going to have EEO minority compliance reports available for clients on um, those that are working jobs that may require 
them for the minority compliance reporting for that job. Um, if anyone's uploading online for those compliance reports, can create the electronic upload format. So the federal and the California department upload here, but they'll also have a number of print options available inside the database. Our team is staying up to date with the reporting formats, the industry standards for these minority reports here. So we're gonna have a number of formats available just like our certified payroll reports here. Not to jump into every single report here, just to show the basic uh, US Department of Labor minority compliance report here. Go ahead and put in the date range from that report and tell them for that job, that monthly employment utilization. Hey, what, with what trade were they working under? What did I have for male? What did I have for female? Have that um, minority compliance report generated for the client inside the database. If there is a spot for it on the reports, there's a spot for it inside of our system for this information to be tracked and then pulled in to the corresponding report for that client. All right, so then a number of other reports available, earnings and deductions reports, uh, uh, a 401k to see where they stand with that, um, that vendor. Um, the next big one that I'll jump into here are gonna be those certified payroll reports. So again, can upload electronically online. Also gonna have over 40 different print formats for those that are just printing our certifieds here. Um, but those California DIR, EMARS, LCP tracker, um, whenever they're ready to then create that electronic upload, send off, select that format, go ahead and put in the date range, click report. And that, um, and that information is then available for them there. Um, even though this looks like a jumbled information here, that's because the system is building the LCP tracker, the electronic upload for you here. Once everything looks good to go, go ahead and click close. System will let you know, hey, that file has not been created. Create file now, click yes. It'll export that XLM file to the client's desktop for them to log into that online electronic uh, provider upload to then upload that file that have been created for their certifieds. I'll jump into then the certified payroll prints here. So those that aren't electronically uploading here can be using those print formats. They're gonna have over 40 different print formats. So it doesn't matter where that client is performing work. Our team's gonna stay up to date with the standards for those reports. We'll even generate no work performed certifieds here. Show all the versions we have available, but again, not to jump into every single one, that generic WH-347, the U.S. Department of Labor certified here, can even generate those no work performs. As I scroll through, have that information broken out for those jobs that do need the certified reports here. Automatically populate this for the client here. Again, if there's a spot for it in the system, there's a spot for it to then pull into the report here. Then the last thing with these certifieds, we'll then also be able to generate the signature pages. So once it's good to go for the client, PDF, pull it outside the database, sign, send it off where it needs to go. All right, so then uh, for those contractors that are performing um, union work, working with one union, working with multiple unions, again, gonna be able to set up those rates that we need to pay the employees and those benefits. Then when it comes time to cut the check to the union or also see where we stand here, gonna have a union report that's generated pulling in that union pay information for our employees. Show me my employee, what he was, uh, what trade he was working under, what his earning types were, total hours worked, gross wages, what all those deductions and fringes that were included with that employee's pay here. As I scroll through to the next page, give me a nice summary page for my local six. Then again, if that client's working with multiple unions here, does not matter, gonna be able to set up multiple unions, multiple states, um, inside that database here, have multiple rates be able to be assigned to um, those jobs for those employees based on what they're working. All right, then the last report I'll cover here today, um, we know uh, with construction payroll, again, we're saying that we're paying our employees $15 an hour, but we're gonna need more detailed job costing when it comes to that construction payroll, because uh, th that's crucial when it comes to seeing what are ultimately costing us to perform that work for our company here, what it costs our client to perform um, those jobs. So we're gonna have the burden employee summary report here. Go ahead, put in the date range that wants to be ran for. Then what this report will do is going hand in hand with that employee's hours, his earnings, what he was being paid, 
first commercial rate or that prevailing wage rate, then be able to pull in the corresponding burden that was involved here, FICA, FUDA, SUDA, workers' comp, um, union fringes, extra burden, then give us a nice subtotal, give us our average hourly rate down to the penny, give us that more detailed job costing when it comes to that construction payroll, what was going on with those payroll runs for our client and their team. Um, but again, with these reports inside the database, they are custom default um, set up available for the client here, but if they needed any custom report formatting, something specific, to that client's needs. Um, we can create custom reports, add custom calculations to reporting setup um, for clients that may need a more custom setup um, for their team there. So not limited to just the basic uh, uh, job cost reports here, can get some more detail as well for those clients. All right, so um, with that then, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up our last polling question here today. So um, the third polling question here, go ahead and launch. It's going to be payroll for construction can provide your client with which of the following reports is it going to be certified payroll union reports job cost reports none of these reports or all of these reports again opened up our third polling question here payroll for construction can provide your client with which of the following reports certified payroll union reports, job cost reports, or none of these reports, or lastly, all of these reports. Give one a few more seconds here. All right, looks like everyone's answered here, and looks like everyone got it correct. The answer was D, all of these reports here would be available and produced, um, provided for the client by payroll for construction, the database here, so. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and jump back into the PowerPoint slide here today. Um, and what I'll do is I'll pull up my contact information here. So anyone in the audience has any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, give me a call here. Um, we hold one-on-one -on -one demonstrations over the Zoom platform with clients. So um, if you wanna hold a separate one-on-one -on -one session or you wanna get your clients set up for a live presentation of payroll for construction, reach out at any point in time we can get that set up for you there um, and I'll also go ahead and open up the polling if anyone in the audience has any questions feel free to throw them in the questions box now and I'll get them answered for you here all right so looks like first question we have here um, can my client still cut an off cycle check in the middle of a payroll period um, if we have to run like a layoff check? Yes, so um, even though we are your payroll service provider, um, inside the database, the trainer would set up an L cycle and off cycle from the normal payroll cycle run um, that the client would be able to go in, enter the pay information for that employee and cut an off cycle check at any point in time, um, and e even if it's in the middle of a payroll run. Then the next time that we process the payroll for that team, um, then our team would update the taxing information, update all that pay history, job costing information for that off cycle check. So I'm um, not limited to um, only processing checks on the normal payroll cycle and still cut uh, one time off cycle checks outside of that payroll database. Another question here. Can direct deposits be broken out across multiple bank accounts for employees? Yes, that is correct. Um, yes, yes, we can handle the breaking out of direct deposit pay into multiple bank accounts for the employees. On the employee record, um, we can break that information out of the three bank accounts um, for the employees. No additional charges for the breaking out of the direct deposit. And our team handling the direct deposit uploads, um, that information would be automated and handled by our team. Looks like we got all the questions answered here. Um, so again, thank you everyone for taking the time out of your day to join me for today's presentation. Um, again, if you have any questions or are interested in setting up a time to discuss or for your client to hold a, a, a presentation of payroll for construction, feel free to give me an email here or shoot us a call at 800-949-9620. But 
Uh, thanks again, everyone. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their Thursday here.